All right, we are back to chapter three. Uh, contamination, food allergens, food, and foodborne illnesses. So here uh, we're gonna talk about your physical contaminants, all right? And we're gonna talk about your foodborne illness and you're gonna talk about your allergens. Allergens are very, very important. First thing I need you to know is people can die from these, okay? So one is who's got an allergy? What's your allergy? Because, you know, I know I'm allergic to penicillin, so every time I go to the doctors, they go, what are you allergic to? I'm allergic to penicillin. Um, I have an allergy to salmon. Um, now, I can eat it, but I can't touch it. So I'll t if I touch it with my raw hands, it, all of a sudden I'll start scratching and I'll get little hives. I can eat it though, I don't understand why. Um, I have students who have didn't know they had an allergy and all of a sudden they one day they ate shrimp and they were sick um, I have a nephew who is allergic to peanuts so anything that has to do with nuts he cannot eat um, so there's no peanut butter in their house and we're a peanut butter family <clears throat> so allergies are very very important people die from them uh, I'll tell you a story I knew a chef um, this this was a personal story of his uh, him and his best friend were in college. They were at UGA and they went to a Chinese restaurant and his friend had a um, seafood allergy. And so they went to dinner and sat down. He ordered egg rolls and he asked, hey, by the way, is there any uh, seafood in these? And the waitress said, no, there's not. So he, you know, he ate the egg rolls. They were all ground up. He was 19 years old. Uh, so he ate the egg rolls, all ground up, didn't see it, uh, died in the parking lot. So he didn't have an EpiPen on him, nothing. So you gotta be really, really careful with this. If you have an allergy that is that deadly, guess what? You need to have EpiPens. Um, I've had students before, they have a seafood allergy and they don't have an EpiPen. Um, I have students who have had weird, weird onion allergies. I've had students who are, I mean, people are allergic to everything. Um, so, you know, I, sometimes I'll be like, wow, that's a new one, I haven't heard that one. Uh, but for the most part, you need to realize people have allergies and you have to understand that and you have to respect that. So I used to have, I was a hotel chef uh, and I would have cooks, you know, a salad would come back and you know, the waitress would go, oh, they're allergic to uh, nuts. And my cook would literally start picking off the pecans. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. You gotta make a brand new salad because just the oil on the leaf of lettuce could kill somebody. Um, so you gotta be very, very aware of that, all right? Um, so let's talk about, we'll talk about physical contaminants. Uh, we talked about what they are. So metal shavings, wood, fingernails, uh, staples, bandages, earrings. Uh, glass, uh, jewelry, dirt, um, those are all physical uh, contaminants, all right? Now you have natural ones, which are your bones, okay? Or a fruit pit, those would be natural um, hazardous contaminants uh, because people could choke from them. <clears throat> so um, contaminants, symptoms, bleeding and pain, all right? So if you swallow something, guess what? You could easily uh, get caught and cut something and you can bleed. Uh, so you wanna be real careful. Uh, mild to fatal injuries are possible. Cuts, uh, dental damage, you know, how many times have you been into something and boom, your crown broke off or tooth cracked or whatever, um, you know, and they choke on it. Or they're just choking, it gets stuck in their throat, their esophagus. Prevention is purchase food from an approved reputable purveyor wow that's we keep hearing that um closest uh closely inspect food received all right so you want to inspect things you're going to have things that are going to be you know at the manufacturers got put into food um i've seen that before um i've seen uh <clears throat> i've seen where i poured out sugar and all of a sudden i find a little metal piece or a screw i mean Things happen, you, you never know. I didn't put it there, but it got ha it happened with the manufacturer. So you just don't know. Um, take steps to prevent physical contaminants, uh, including practicing good personal hygiene. Um, so sources, so chemicals, you have your chemical contaminants, which is your cleaners, your sanitizers, your polishes, machine lubricants, um, pesticides. Um, let's say I didn't get my, my soap didn't wash off 
totally from my pot that I, I washed. You know, that's a contaminant. Um, hand lotion, hairsprays, that's why, you know, we don't have any of that. Um, certain types of kitchenware, um, pewter, copper, zinc, um, any kind of pottery, uh, you need, you could be, a, you know, certain things will, will cause, you know, it won't clean properly. Um, chemical, the yeah, symptoms from chemical contaminants, uh, it varies uh, by the chemical consumed. Uh, meat illness, most illnesses occur within minutes. Um, especially with that uh, vomiting, diarrhea it's, is typical. Um, <clears throat> if an illness is suspected, call 911 immediately and call the uh, poison center uh, control. So, you know, you don't want pe people to get poisoned. Uh, prevention, use chemicals approved from a food purveyor. Um, you don't want to just go buy certain chemicals that aren't for kitchen, all right? Uh, purchase chemicals you, uh, from approved reputable suppliers. Uh, store chemicals away from prep areas, uh, prep storage areas, and service areas. So great example, our, our food, um, our storage area for all our chemicals, we have a little closet that we st store them in here. Um, when I was in hotels, I always had them stored in a, in a different area away from the food. You just have to uh, because the last thing you want to do is it get contaminated some way, somehow by accident. Um, so you always want to store them separately. Uh, never store chemicals above uh, food areas or um, above food. So um, you don't want to have it on a shelf above a table that you're cooking on because um, things can drip. Uh, prevent use chemicals uh, for their intended use. <laughs> don't mix chemicals. That's a, that's a good one. Um, Make sure that the manufacturer's labels and original chemical containers are readable. Usually you're gonna have a MSD book, uh, which is a big binder that will tell all the chemicals that are used in your kitchen so that if anything is drank or, or um, splash in your eye or whatever, you'll be able to go to something to tell you what it is um, and what you need to do to help somebody. Uh, deliberate contamination of food, you need to be careful about. Um, you know, groups may attempt to contaminate food. Terrorists and, or act, um, activists, uh, disgruntled current or former employees, uh, that could happen. Uh, vendors or competitors. Um, so your first, if your FDA defense tool is alert. So the alert, it stands for, and you need to know this, it'll be on your certification exam. Uh, alert is a sure look uh, employees, reports, and threats. Okay, so assure is make sure products received are from safe sources. So you're assuring people that you're using safe sources. You want to look, monitor the security of the products in the facility. You want to make sure that, you know what, there's nobody walking around in the kitchen that shouldn't be there, that you don't know. Um, especially when I was in hotels, we had all these rooms. We had, I had two different floors of kitchens. So I had to make sure that, you know what, that nobody was in these kitchens that shouldn't be. Guests would roam around, all of that. But you never know, somebody could be coming in and trying to poison people. You gotta be really careful with that. Um, unfortunately, you gotta think the worst sometimes. Uh, so employees know uh, who is in your facility. Uh, if there's an employee that, you know, it is disgruntled and they're on property where <clears throat> they're off, you know, why are you here? What are you doing? You know, you need to be very aware of that. Um, and that's why you'll see a lot of places have security. Um, reports, you wanna keep information related to the food defense accessible. Um, and then threat, develop a plan for responding to suspicious activity or threat to the operation. So you wanna have some sort of plan in place. And usually big companies are going to. Um, food allergens, uh, food allergen is a protein in a food or ingredient to which some people are sensitive. You know, and everybody it has a different sensitivity. Everybody is sensitive and delicate. You always gotta remember that. Um, and these proteins occur naturally. All right, so I have, I know people who are allergic to pineapples. I know people who are allergic to bananas, onions, carrots, celery. I know, you know, it's <clears throat> salmon, seafood, peanuts, you know, so you have, allergies uh, people are allergic to the smell i've had students they're oh chef i'm allergic to nuts okay and then we're roasting um some pecans for a 
dish and they're the ones that go and get them out of the oven. What's When you grab the sheet tray out of the oven, what's happening? Steam, what hits? Uh, it hits them, they're allergic, boom. On the ground, just had an allergic reaction. Don't touch that stuff. If you're allergic to it, don't touch it, okay? Um, so allergy symptoms, nausea, wheezing, shortness of breath. Uh, hives, you'll see hives start coming on people, itchy rashes. Um, swelling in various parts, including faces, eyes, hands, um, <clears throat> vomiting or diarrhea, abdominal pain, and itchy throat. Usually you're going to see the hives, you're going to see the throat start to close, and they should have an EpiPen. If you have an allergy and you don't have an EpiPen, you need to get one. People die from, not, from these things. Uh, allergic reaction symptoms can become seriously uh, quick. So, I mean, I've seen allergic reactions that, you know what, it's minimal. I've seen reactions that, you know what, they go into anaphylactic shock. So they need that EpiPen to save their life. Um, so you gotta be careful. Um, common food allergens. So here's your big eight. So you have milk, soy, uh, eggs, wheat. Uh, wheat is a big one these days, Gl the gluten allergy. A lot of people have the gluten, they can't do flour. Um, they're cooking with different tapioca flour, chickpea flour. Um, almond flour uh, because the wheat flour they can't use. Um, there's some sort of reaction in their body. Um, you have fishes, uh, fish, which is your bass, your flounder, your cod. Um, I've seen that. A lot of you're going to see your shellfish allergies, which is your shellfish, your lobster, your shrimp, um, your crab, all of that. Um, some people can eat fish but can't have shellfish. I, I don't question anymore. I think I've seen everything. Uh, peanuts or nut allergies, um, and then tree nuts such as walnuts, pecans, uh, you have that. So, and there's, that's your big eight, but there's, you know what, again, I had a student, I'll never forget, I always ask everybody, first day of class, what's your allergy? And she raised her hand, onions, carrots, celery, and I'm like, oh, you can't eat stock, you can't have stock, because when we make stocks, guess what, chicken stock, everything has onions, celery, carrots. And as I'm saying that, I go, you might want to, and she goes, oh, I'm allergic to cinnamon and nutmeg. And I'm like, oh, well, pastry won't help you either. <laughs> she got through the program, she did okay. But again, she protected herself. And you have to protect yourself with these allergies. The one thing I will tell you, it's your allergy, it's not mine, you know? So at the end of the day, you're the one that's gonna suffer. And I have students, I've had students in the past, I've been teaching for 16 years, that I sit there and I go, you have an allergy, you can't touch this stuff, why are you doing this, you need an EpiPen. Um, I've had students tell me they don't have the money for one, then you need to protect yourself more. Um, so you just gotta be very, very careful, okay? Um, service staff, your service staff, they need to know the menu, they need to know what's in every item, If what's in a sauce, what's in, in a, a casserole what's in the mashed potatoes what's in whatever it is it, they need to know exactly what you use are you using peanut oil if i have an allergy i have people tell me people will come in hey they have a shrimp allergy and guess what i'm not gonna fry the potato i'm gonna fry their stuff separately i'm gonna i'm gonna take more precautions for people who have allergies than people who don't why because i want to make sure that nobody dies in my restaurant because if it does, guess what? Close the doors, we're done. If somebody dies in your parking lot, somebody dies in your restaurant, just close the door, you're done. You're, you're done, okay? And I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen, I've heard about it happening. Um, identify any allergens in the items. Uh, suggest menu items without the allergy. Uh, clearly identify guest orders in the kitchen um, and deliver food separately to prevent cross-contamination. So you gotta be really, really careful with that. Uh, kitchen staff, avoid cross contact. Do not cook different types of food in the same fryer. So I'm not gonna cook French fries with shrimp. Now, does that happen? Yes, it happens all the time. And that's why, you know what, if somebody comes in, hey, I have a shrimp allergy, I'm, I'm frying everything. If I know that I fry fish in that fryer, guess what, I'm frying their potatoes separately. I'm getting a pot, a small pot, and I'm doing a fry. I'm just gonna, you gotta be careful. Um, do not put food on surfaces that have touched allergies. So again, you know what? If, you're, if you have a set of tongs that have touched shrimp and then you go to touch chicken, it, that just little particle can get on the chicken and all of a sudden it goes out to the person who has that allergy and they just, 
they just got sick and they don't have an EpiPen on them. Hey, why do I? I'll never forget, um, and this is sad to me. So my nephew has a horrible, horrible peanut allergy. He goes out to eat and I see this kid, he has full anxiety, full anxiety when we are out to eat. And he will ask, hey, I, I have, he tells him, I have a horrible peanut allergy, da, da, da. Is there anything? They take precautions. I mean, he's, he's not ordered anything that has anything to do with peanuts. And all of a sudden, he's having an allergic reaction. And this kid now, he eats chicken plain. I mean, he, it's sad. He doesn't enjoy food um, because it's, it's something that is horrific to him um, that he is scared of. And so, you know, when I see people who have those kind of anxiety and that fear when they're in your restaurant or your hotel or, or whatever it is, guess what? It's because they've had, they have reason to. It's not because they're being hypersensitive. So please respect that. Um, I do. I, I, I've seen it too many times. And then food labels. Food labels should always, they always should have um, any allergens listed on there. You'll see it listed on most of them. Uh, how to avoid cross contact is keep uh, check recipes and labels, uh, wash hands, rinse, sanitize, cookware, utensils, equipment. Make sure you're not using what you're using for shellfish is not used for chicken. Uh, what you're using for nuts is not used for a salad. You just gotta be careful. Uh, make sure the allergen doesn't touch anything uh, for customers with food allergies. Uh, wash your hands, change your gloves. Um, changing gloves is, is huge. Um, if somebody, if I'm cooking for somebody with an allergy, I use a, a brand new clean space. Um, use separate fryers uh, or uh, cooking oils for guests uh, with allergies and label your packages, okay? So allergies are huge, 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 huge. Um, I can't tell you enough. Um, so uh, with these chapters, so that's chapters one, two, and three. Uh, this finishes three. So you guys should be doing the questions at the end of each chapter. Um, and going from there, all right? So have a great day. If you have questions, ask. Uh, and I have a forum for you guys about the big six um, from chapter two that you each need to do. Um, again, don't forget that participating, your participation grade is a part of you turning in your homeworks, your test the knowledge, um, and you doing the forums, okay? Uh, thank you, have a good day, bye-bye.